View this video from the playlist to see the complete video content. The needle strikes something hard on your sewing machine. What this means is that the needle went down through the fabric or maybe partially through the fabric and it happened to hit a metal surface on the machine. It could have hit the needle plate, the retaining ring, or the hook down below, and it's likely to have left a burr on that part. If you continue to try and sew, you're likely to find that you're gonna get a shredded thread above the eye of the needle as you sew, or perhaps you won't get any stitching at all, or you'll skip numerous stitches. When this happens, you need to stop sewing and when you stop sewing, we need to take our machine apart and we need to check for those burrs. We certainly need to replace the needle and then we can go from there. In this segment, I'm gonna show you how to check those parts, how to polish the parts to fix them, and then how to continue sewing. Let's inspect the parts and make sure that we don't have any needle strikes. I, this is the gib hook again, and I'm feeling this top surface along the, the special scarf that we put in it in order to minimize needle strikes. I'm feeling the top, I'm feeling the left side of the hook, and I'm feeling underneath it and the back side. If there's a burr there, there's a piece of lint, but no burr. If there was a burr, I would feel it. And if I had a burr, I'd want to take some emery paper, and I'd want to gently polish in line with the hook, like I'm doing here, or maybe even here back at the scarf. Or, Sailrite sells a fine jewelry, or jewelry file, which is really an exceptionally uh, sharp cutting file and works great. I recommend that everybody get one of these for their machine. They're expensive, but they're well worth it. And if you file like this, you can cut any burrs off quite easily. I would probably use emery paper back here instead of the file. But you want to keep that hook point nice and sharp, and you don't want a burr on it. Now, how would you get a burr on it? Well, if you bend a needle and the hook comes forward and hits it just right, it can burr the tip or blunt it. Or if you have a needle strike that's, that's hard enough that bends the needle to the right, it can come in and and put a nick here in the hook. Uh, our scarf helps to eliminate that, but when you're working with heavy material, that sort of thing can happen, and that is one of the maintenance things that you wanna keep in mind, which is keeping your hook clean. Less likely that you're gonna have issues here than it is with the retaining ring cap spring. So this is the retaining ring. The cap spring is this curved metal plate on the top, and this cap spring is attached to the retaining ring with these two screws. The holes under these two screws are slotted, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but basically, um, when you're, if you install a new cap spring, you need to make sure that it is installed in a manner that the needle comes down roughly equal between the front and the back surface along that plane where the needle comes through, and you can adjust that a little bit by moving this plate back and forth. And you wanna make sure that it's nice and tight to the top of the retaining ring if you ever do replace this plate. This plate, which is the plate that was on the machine, is in perfect order except for that little piece of debris that I can't seem to clear off of there. There, got it. And I don't see any nicks, um, and uh, the thread, when it pulls up through here, pulls along these edges, depending upon whether you're in forward or reverse stitching. And if there are any nicks or cuts on this edge, it can cause the thread to abrade and end up uh, either breaking the stitch or shredding the thread as you're sewing. So we happen to damage one just to show you what one looks like that's not properly done. First thing is this one is humped and it shouldn't be. So I'd want to loosen these screws, press it down and then retighten the screws when we install it. The other thing that we've done here to show you what not to do is when the needle came down, as we forced it out of position, you can see what it did. It hit and punched a slight hole in the plate and also broke the edge of the plate right along here. Now, if you can straighten it out with a pair of needle nose pliers and flatten the hump in this case, you can come back in with your fine jewel file and you can polish this area and make sure that the edges, not the top so much, but the edges of this triangular cutout are nice and smooth. And as long as those are smooth and the thread can pass those edges, you'll be able to continue to sew without a problem. But this is the number one sacrificial component on the part on the sewing machine. It's part number 1603. And if you're having sewing problems, it is the very first thing that you look at apart from the needle bar height that we just discussed. So check your needle bar height first, then come back to your cap spring, check to make sure that it's not damaged. If it's damaged, polish it, bend it back into position properly and go again. Uh, if it's really bad, replace it.